Again, this is a message a lot of people don't want to hear. I'll never go through this situation again, ever. Sometimes I found out when I'm in the worst position, I'm actually in the best position. So I don't want to go back. Well, that sucks. Something has to change. So when everybody's playing on evenings and playing a, 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 a Thursdays, Fridays, with TGI Friday, I, I'm like, thank God it's Friday so I can get to work. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm g Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. We're fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like. So of all days, would you believe that the unemployment benefits for a lot of people expires on Labor Day, on a holiday, when everybody outside right now, I see a lot of empty office buildings, empty parking spots, but very full malls and shopping areas and uh, 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 entertainment areas are packed right now on Labor Day. Barbecue is packed. Everybody's out eating right now, but where am I at? I'm here at the office. I'm grinding it out. And uh, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, of all days for this to end on Labor Day, on Labor Day. So officially, the $300 weekly boost that the federal government was adding on top of the state unemployment is now officially expired. So governors now, individual state governors, have to decide where to pull additional money to help pay people and help fund and finance their unemployment benefits. And uh, there's a couple uh, different federal uh, uh, buckets of money that can pull from, the local, the, your state governors can pull from to help uh, potentially uh, 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 replace the $300 weekly boost for your unemployment. But if you were, depending on the federal government, continue that, nope, there is no extension, not even a peep uh, from Biden in terms of continuing to extend that officially as today, September 6th, 2021, that weekly boost of $300 now officially is expired. To add on top of the last week's news that uh, the federal eviction moratorium is also expired. So uh, just right here in Texas, where I'm uh, officially now relocated from Chicago, that approximately the eviction moratorium has now expired. Uh, 486,000 Texas renters are affected uh, of those more than 330,000 feared that they're at least somewhat in danger of being evicted. So what do you do? I'll explain here in a second, but uh, that is also gone. In addition to that, last Friday's jobs report, uh, they're expecting 720,000 new jobs to be created in America. Only 235,000 jobs were created. But the biggest spike of the 235,000 was actually in the category of professional and business services. Interesting. A lot of the blame for the weak jobs report is the Delta variant. Uh, but yet at the same time, too, I see a bunch of college football games, parties and clubs and restaurants. and Everybody just balling out and having a great time. Packed. No masks. Whatever the case may be. But yet they blame the Delta variant for not creating enough jobs or a lot of people not wanting to get back to work. So what are my thoughts? Here's my reaction to it. Seeing all these things pile up and just being a person, being about town, just observing with my own two eyes, what's going on, the reality of life, not necessarily what goes on in the media, not necessarily what happens with our politicians who uh, operate this business from behind a desk in a bureaucracy. Uh, my reaction to this is number one, uh, we've been saying this for a very long time. If you weren't using this extra money, if you was, wasn't using this extra time to plan on your next move or moves, it's not like you lacked money or time. You just lacked discipline. Again, this is a message that a lot of people don't want to hear. Um, you may tune out right here. I totally get it. I totally understand. You might drop another comment message here. Matt, you know what you're talking about. You're so high, bro. You're so out of touch. Listen, guys, who am I? I used to make $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. Who am I? I'm just this, uh, a kid from an immigrant family uh, born in the Chicagoland area with no rich parents, no uh, 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 financial inheritance, no financial head start, no network to plug into. I listened to the Marines. Eight years in the Marines, that was my college. That was my uh, uh, University of the Hard Knocks. That was my life accelerator to get real with my life very early. Been divorced, been married, filed bankruptcy and back in 1996 as a 21-year-old corporal in the Marines. And uh, I've learned my tough lessons, and I realized through those tough lessons, I remember uh, uh, filing bankruptcy, I remember telling myself, I'll never go through this situation again, ever, ever go through this situation again. But sadly, a lot of people like making the same mistake over and over and over. And by the way, who am I to say? Because I've done that many areas of my life too as well. But I find myself um, in a position when it comes to money, since it stings me so badly, I've learned over time not to make the same financial mistakes 
over and over. Relationship-wise, I screwed it all up. Obviously, that's that's been my dialogue. If you've seen that in my YouTube video, you've seen that on my channel. Um, I'm completely an open book. I'm authentic, and and hopefully, you feel that I'm genuine. Uh, about that that I'm sharing with you my life mistakes is I want you to avoid a lot of mistakes I made so therefore you can have a accelerated path to become a first generation faith-based cash flow millionaire but number one my reaction to this is some tips some takeaways don't wait for things to pile up and, and when you have life hitting you boom 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 you say ah oh, I just put it away push push that pile of envelopes or push this pile of problems to the side. It'll handle yourself, sweep it under the rug. It'll handle yourself. Somebody else is gonna take care of it. I've learned the hard way, nobody ever will. You gotta take care of it. You gotta handle it. Uh, things do not um, miraculously just evaporate. You gotta hit it as hard back as it's hitting you. Uh, so how do you practically do that? Um, if things have just piled up on you, you know, your, your uh, unemployment check just expired, your uh, moratorium on your eviction just expired, uh, There's the job that you have is either not hiring or not paying you enough, and you're fighting for a politician to pay you 15, 20, 25 bucks an hour, that's not happening anytime soon. Don't wait for somebody else to wave a magic wand and improve your life. You've got to do some areas of practicality. Talk to your landlord. Uh, many states, I'm reading here, many states have their own rental assistance program. Because uh, they, you know, a lot of landlords, you know, either a they don't want their tenants uh, taken off, but at the same time too, there's a bunch of landlords that also don't have to participate in the rental assistance program, so they don't have to accept the money, and they can still proceed with the evictions. But if you have a dialogue, you know, I've, I've realized in many relationships, even if you have, may have a disagreement or somebody feels that they're being taken advantage of, if you sit there, you apologize, you know, you empty your cup, you, you say, "Listen, man, I, I'm coming through some tough times." With humility. Uh, soft tone you know hopefully they can extend grace and mercy upon your current situation um they'll listen to you hopefully uh but you got to talk it through you got to talk it out but worst case scenario happens listen sometimes i found out when i'm in the worst position i'm actually in the best position so who knows uh who knows what the lord is leading you towards maybe they're leading to a close relationship with your landlord i don't know you got to figure that stuff out or they may be leading to another opportunity, another way for you to get housing or for you to get income. Uh, the, 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 the Lord is directing you on a different path, that there's a specific divine appointment that's happening right now. And you should also be listening for it and being aware of it if that happens. But uh, usually when I find myself in a worse position, I find myself in a best position. But I got to make sure I'm also doing my part. But according to rental assistance in many states, in order to qualify for rental assistance, you have to be making less than the area's median income of 80% or less, okay? So if you are making less than 80% of the area's median income or less, potentially you might qualify for rental assistance. So these are some of the things you gotta check out in your city, in your state. The second thing I'm thinking about here too as well, as I mentioned earlier, my earlier point, um, I've built my business, I've built my career, going from part-time entrepreneur to full-time entrepreneur to all-the-time entrepreneur. I built it on rethinking about what holidays, evenings, and long weekends, long weekends, holiday weekends are all about. You know, uh, you know, the, the last thing my wife and I think about when we plan our vacations is, okay, it's the holiday weekend, everybody's going out, so we gotta go out too. Actually, it's the opposite. When everybody's going out, let everybody go out. Let everybody pay premium airfare, premium hotel rates, premium gas, premium whatever, stand in line, long lines, all, the, all those things that happen when everybody is doing something. But my wife and I and our family have done, we've done opposite. So when people are taken off on holiday weekends, either we go before or after, and we don't go on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, we take off when? Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, or Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, in the areas where a lot of these businesses, a lot of these hotels, a lot of these uh, airlines, they would love to sell you a hotel room when there's not a lot of demand. They love to sell you airplane ticket when there's not a lot of demand. So we've rethought about what typical holidays uh, were all about, what long weekends were all about, what summers were all about, what evenings were all about. And if you find yourself stuck in a position of entertainment to try to uh, uh, forget about the pain that you're going through, the situation that you're going through, and you're, you know, you're looking through a substance or a, a, a behavior uh, skill set or behavior in period that you're trying to avoid the situation, that's not good. 
Um, quite the opposite is true. If you find a business, you find a side hustle, if you start your like I did, I started my side business leaving the military for a year, almost a year in some change. I studied the insurance industry. I studied finance. I studied the, money, the rules of the money game. Uh, when I did get out, I didn't fully transition to my full-time business right away. I took three uh, uh, de minimis jobs. I was a Jiffy Lou Hood technician. I was a Olive Garden server and I was a YMCA lifeguard. I'm just wowing you with my resume right now. But even then, even as I transitioned out the military, I took these menial jobs, combined income together, pay the bills and uh, uh, feed my, my children as a single father of three kids and was still able to use that time and energy and resources to pay the bills while I built my business on evenings and weekends at times that I'm not clocking in and clocking out for somebody else. So when everybody's playing on evenings and playing a, 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 a Thursdays, Fridays, when TGI Friday, I, I'm like, thank God it's Friday so I can get to work more. And because the real believers in their dreams, I found work when everybody is playing. Now, I'm not saying not to go out and have fun. I'm not saying not to go enjoy your family or have what they call quote unquote work-life balance. You know, I'm Filipino, so that means we have a lot of parties. Uh, we have a lot of get togethers, a lot of weekends uh, where it's uh, uh, anniversaries or weddings or, or um, our version of uh, quinceañeras, which is called debuts. Um, we have a lot of that in our family. And then you got to go to the other, the in-laws. So like literally every weekend, you could potentially in a typical Filipino family have every weekend booked for like six months. Um, I didn't say not go to the wedding. I didn't say not go to the quinceañera. I didn't say not go to the, to the barbecue. I'm saying just don't do that all day. And so that's what we did. I said, listen, I'm going to show up, grab a plate, socialize. Hey, auntie. Hey, uncle. Hey, cuz. Kids play around. Boom, 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 boom. All right, cuz, you get play together. Okay, we got to go. We got to go. A couple hours later, we got to go. I didn't have all day to get drunk. I didn't have all day to drink beers. I didn't have all day to get, you know, just uh, uh, feed myself with uh, plates upon plates upon plates. No, I needed to get to work. I needed to see clients. I needed to see appointments. I needed to grow my enterprise. I needed to expand my potential. That's what I did on, on rethinking holidays and weekends. If you look at, by the way, if you look at the root word of vacation, okay? If you look at the word, root word of vacation, the etymology of the, word, of the word, it comes from two words. It comes from vaca and shun. Shun is a state of being. Vaca is to remove. So in other words, if you put the two words together, it means to remove oneself from its current being. Like, I don't want to live a life where I got to remove myself from my life. I love my life. I want to love my life. I don't want to escape it. I don't want to remove myself from it. It's kind of like vacate, right? You got to vacate an apartment. So vacation means removing oneself, one's current present life, and then have to go back to it. How many times do you see people on vacation? Oh, man, I don't want to go back. Why? Listen, when we're on vacation, we just came back from Aruba a month ago. Earlier this year, we went to Maui. We opened up both, uh, we opened up both Maui. The businesses there were just delighted just to have us over there, excited to have us over there because we're, we're employing their servers or employing their chefs or employing their taxi drivers or employing their, uh, um, their tourism. Same thing to Aruba. They loved having us over there. We're at the Ritz-Carlton. They just love having us over there. And, and when we party, we party hard. We have a great time. But the, like the last couple of days, we're like, can't wait to get back because we got our goals and our dreams. We're set on our vision of our passion, of our purpose. We can't wait to get back from vacation. Some people are thinking, come from vacation. I don't want to go back. Well, that sucks. If that's your reality, I hope and I encourage you, something has to change because you don't want to live the rest of your life that way. You know, I remember uh, one of the quotes from Martin Luther King. He said, most people die at 25 they just get buried at 65. You don't want to live a life for the rest of, of your life that you think sucks. And I hope you improve that on rethinking holidays, long weekends, and evenings. Last mile at least. Right now, we're currently living on this thing called the Great Reshuffle. The Great Resignation, where 55% of all people are rethinking about their priorities. They're rethinking about what job or job they should have. And my encouragement to you is that you find um, a career or a business that is recession and pandemic proof, that you could work part-time basis. And, and before I continue with this point, uh, I wanna read you this proverb, uh, and it's referencing the ant. The, the, what do we learn from an ant? Well, listen here in Proverbs chapter six, verses six through 11, I'm reading a New Living Translation um, uh, uh, version of it. So it says here, take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity 
will attack you like an armed robber. Hmm. Isn't that proverb speaking right about now? And so right about now, you have to reshuffle, rethink, because right now, scarcity and poverty for a lot of people is right on their doorstep. You've drained, many people today have drained their savings. They drained their 401k. They've charged up credit cards. They've borrowed from other people. Do you want to live the rest of your life like that? Do you want to repay back the people that you borrowed money from so therefore the next time push comes to shove, you can go back to them not to borrow money but to invest in a new endeavor so therefore you both can make money? And so right now, I hope that you're choosing a career and or a business where your money and your time and your efforts is recession and pandemic proof that you actually have products also that are recession and pandemic proof that people still buy when it's good times, people still buy when it's bad times. Uh, for me, I want you to check out this video here, what I chose 22 years ago as an entrepreneur, how I took a $500 investment, and today, even though it says $45 million in a thumbnail, today, this is because this was shot last year, our business grew since the pandemic and the recession, how we built a $50 million company with a $500 investment in just six years, simply because I was, my wife and I was looking to do something differently on evenings and weekends, opposite what everybody else was doing. So that being said, guys, I love your thoughts, your comments, your feedback, your you agree with me, you don't agree with me. What are you doing during these precious times? Um, and I wanna read you this one last quote in terms of you starting something new, a business, an endeavor. It's a very powerful quote by uh, Arejo Tony Martins. It reads like this. Some people intertwine self-belief and faith, but I stand to say that they are not the same. Faith is not self-belief. While faith says it can be done, self-belief says I can do it. While faith says there's a possibility, self believes says I'm the possibility. Faith without self-belief is vain. Or as scripture says it, faith without works is dead. My friends, what do you choose to do during these tough times? Because tough times create strong leaders and strong leaders create good times. And America today is looking for some strong leaders that's willing to fight through some tough times. And I hope that's you. That being said, guys, drop your thoughts, your comments, your feedback, your uh, statements. Would you ever got to say to me here in the comment section below? I love engaging together with you. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Here from Dallas, Texas. Boom, from Dallas, Texas. I'm the Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again. Continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.